Are you home right now, Lisa? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm heading home right now. What? Already? I can already see the house. I'll be there immediately. Now's not a really good time. I've got an online meeting coming up. It's fine. Just do your work. I'll just come and leave without bothering you. Just leave the door unlocked, will you? The door's already unlocked. What are you going to be doing here? What? Isn't it obvious? I'm just coming to give you some food I cooked. Mrs. Johnson, I appreciate the gesture, but I don't really need the food. We've already got a lot of food to eat at our house. But I'm sure my son wants to eat his mother's food once in a while. I made a lot just so I could give you some. You do know that I'm a food researcher, right? I make all kinds of food every day. I always serve my family the best food. So we really do have enough to eat, Mrs. Johnson. Quit bragging. You say you're a food researcher, but you basically just do housework, right? It's not much more than being a housewife. Actually, no. I pity my son and grandchildren for having to eat the things you make for this hobby of yours. Put yourself in their shoes for once, won't you? I don't make food as a hobby. The recipes I make have been well thought out, and I'm proud to release them to the public. It's not like I force them to eat the failures I make as well. I have confidence in every aspect of my cooking, taste, nutrition, and looks. Well, they do look good, I guess. But there's no way that they're healthier than old-fashioned food that I make. It's food that my son has been eating since he was born, after all. Nothing tastes better than the mother's cooking. I get it. Leave your food at our house if you wish. We'll eat it gratefully. You should have said that at the start. You really are a strange wife. But please don't take any food from our house, all right? You always take food to eat for dinner, don't you? I already took some. What? You already got here? The food I brought is in the fridge. I took some food in return. You didn't take the salted pork, did you? You mean the big slab of pork? It looked like it was about to rot, so I brought it home. I had it prepared from the day before, and we were planning on eating it tonight. It's my son's favorite, so please bring it back. But I'm already on my way home. If you didn't want me to take it, then you should have written a note saying so. How confusing. But didn't you just suddenly barge in? What do you mean, barge in? I brought some food because I was worried about my son's health. I'm grateful for the food you gave, but please don't take food from us. My son and husband always look forward to the food I make. They even ask me what's for dinner every evening. You're saying that your food, which only looks good, is better than my cooking? Don't be ridiculous. Is it fun making fun of others as goodwill? Mrs. Johnson, I'm going to tell you this straight. What you're doing is a nuisance. Please don't bring any of your food anymore. What? You've got some nerve saying such things. Such a rude wife. Ungrateful, too. Remember this. I brought some meat and potatoes today. What? You came over to our house today? You're so careless leaving your son alone in the house. It's fine, it's just for a short while. He's already in elementary school after all. Your son was there, so I went in and left some food. Didn't I tell you that it was fine if you didn't bring any more food? Today's the last day. You tell me that my food is unwanted even when I'm bringing it out of goodwill. To be honest, you hurt my feelings, so I won't be bringing any more food. It's fine if all you do is bring food, but I don't understand why you always have to insult my work and take home the food my family's been looking forward to. Insult? But I've only been saying the truth. You say you're a food researcher, but that's basically just a housewife that only cooks, right? I don't really think insulting a job like that is a good idea. If you say things like that in public, people are going to call you out. Stop scolding me. You're just my son's wife, right? Why not just stop doing things that will get you scolded? Oh, and about the meat and potatoes? You do know that my son and husband can't eat it, right? Really? <sighs> There's no way you didn't know this. 
Oh, and I'm currently on a diet, so I won't be able to eat it either. Don't waste the food I brought. Eat it, will you? I made a lot. A lot? Enjoy the flavor, okay? Someone whose job revolves around food won't just throw it out, right? Fine, I'll eat it. Oh, and I brought some of the soup you made with me, alright? Again? I'll stop bringing you food since you hate it so much. But I'll come and take some food every now and then, alright? I need a check of the food you're giving to your family is safe to eat. What do you mean, check? I'd hate if my son or grandson fell ill because of your cooking, you see. Take care of the meat and potatoes, okay? It's sure to be better than the food you make. Lisa, just what are you thinking? Andy, what's the matter? My mother collapsed because of the food you made. What did you give her? You must have put some sort of poison in there, didn't you? Poison? It's the curry you made! She collapsed right after eating the curry you made. Her mouth was foaming. She hit her head and had to get stitches. I'm pretty sure she's the one who made that. Mother said that she was pushed by you. So, that's how it is. Andy, that's a lie she must have told you. A lie? I'll show you my smartphone. So take a look at the conversations your mother and I have been having. I've never given her any of my food willingly. She always just takes the food from my fridge. Why would she do such a thing? She always insults my cooking. Maybe she thought just taking our food was wrong. So she always left some of her food, which we didn't ask for as well. I told her to stop, but she wouldn't. Is this true? Ask my husband if you want. The food he wants to eat is always taken, and in return, he's always given food he doesn't want. He's pretty unsatisfied with the whole situation as well. Now she just takes our food without giving anything, though. But you said Mother was the one who made the curry, right? Two days ago, Mrs. Johnson brought some meat and potatoes. But my son and husband hate it, and I want to diet. So my husband turned the meat and potatoes into curry so that they could eat it. You're saying that's what Mother ate? She must have snuck in and stole it again without knowing that it was something she made in the first place. You guys didn't eat it? I have a small taste, but I was fine. But it must be the curry's fault that my stomach feels strange. I'm glad I noticed before my son and husband ate it. I wonder what was in those meat and potatoes. Did Mother know that you were the only one who could eat the meat and potatoes? I wonder if this means that she put something in it to make you sick. That must be the case. We've had arguments over my cooking previously. This must have been her trying to get revenge. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed of my own mother. How is she? She hit her head and was unconscious for a while, but she's regained consciousness and has been insulting you ever since. Her attitude towards me has been terrible since a while back. She always insults my work. I don't know what she put in those meat and potatoes, but this is a crime, right? Yes, it is. Quite a heavy one as well. Why don't we meet and talk things over, Andy? I'll show you how my mother has been treating me. Ugh, oh, my head hurts. The doctor said that there may be after effects. That Lisa is such a bitch. I'll have George divorce, divorce her as soon as I leave the hospital. What are you talking about, Mother? Isn't it your own fault you collapsed? What are you talking about? It's because that bitch of a wife put some sort of poison in the curry I ate. It's her fault that... But aren't you the one who made it? You still haven't noticed? The curry you ate was originally the meat and potatoes you gave her. What? The meat and potatoes? You forced her to take it, right? No one would eat it, so they turned into curry, she said. The one you stole and ate. That was... I guess it did kind of smell like meat and potatoes. It's so lucky that you were the one who ate it and not them. I'm glad only you were the one who got hurt. What do you mean by that? You know what you did was a crime, right? What if Lisa was the one who got hospitalized? Just imagining it makes me shiver. What is it with you? Quit over-exaggerating. But didn't you just collapse and hit your head? If it was Lisa and not you, then you truly would be the criminal. What do you mean, criminal? I don't know about these after-effects of yours, but I know that I won't be helping you, alright. 
I'm not even going to visit you in the hospital anymore. You plan on leaving your mother? Yes. Goodbye. This is Lisa. It seems you ate the curry in claps, and that there was foam coming out of your mouth. Just what did you put in those meat and potatoes? You bitch. Why'd you turn the meat and potatoes into curry? Because no one would eat it. My husband and son would eat it as long as it tasted different. You really are bothersome. Well, I did leave it as it was for one day, but neither my son or husband would eat it. I thought that reusing the ingredients would be better than just throwing it away. I'm so glad you stole it before anyone else could eat it. So you didn't even eat a bit of what someone gave you as a gift? I had a little as a taste test. My stomach felt strange after that, though. I'm thinking of going to the doctor if it gets worse. Why didn't you eat it? I told you to eat it, alright? And didn't I tell you that I couldn't? Did you hear a word I said? Right? Shut up. You've insulted me again. You better get ready for when I get out of the hospital. Shouldn't you be worrying about yourself more? It seems that Andy won't be talking to you anymore. My family plans on doing the same. I told George about what happened, and it seems he was quite disappointed in you. What? Even George? Anyway, Mrs. Johnson, is what you're saying about the after effects true? Yes. The doctor said something about how there might be abnormalities in the brain. He said that there might be numbness in the feet and hands, and even memory loss later on. And you're saying that you all are going to leave me? Yes. You no longer have any family to support you, so good luck on your own. <laughs> you wretch! Do you still plan on taking that attitude towards me? Why don't you take a moment and think about the situation you're in? As long as I don't forgive you, there's no way your family will either. You're telling me to apologize. Nothing good will come if you keep taking that attitude. You'll probably never see your children ever again. Oh wait, I guess that's already guaranteed. <laughs> don't steal my children from me. There is something I want to ask you. Just what did you put in those meat and potatoes? That was pesticide, but I only put a little. But you collapsed and foamed from your mouth, so it must have been pretty strong. Anyone knows that pesticide is toxic. It would have been really bad if a child had eaten it. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't forgive you. But you're the one who started it by refusing my cooking. In my opinion, cooking is something that's supposed to make people happy. It's a central idea of my work. You have no right to go around giving people that food of yours. Please live the rest of your life alone, so that no one will have to eat your cooking ever again. After that, it seems that Mrs. Johnson was quite troubled by the after effects of hitting her head. Decline in language ability, numbness of the hands and feet, insomnia, and decline of vision were just some of the symptoms. It seems that she has to undergo rehabilitation. She had no family to support her, and it seems she really had to do it all by herself. But she must have lost the will, and eventually saw going to the hospital and now just stays in her house. I sometimes meet Andy, and we get along for the most part. She's apologized to me for what her mother did, but it's not her fault. As someone whose job revolves around cooking, I can't forgive what Mrs. Johnson did. What she did was a straight crime. I, on the other hand, will continue to make food that makes people happy. Ben, are you on your lunch break already? I am. Did you need something? Mom, you're not going to ask me for more money, are you? You don't need to sound so annoyed. It's not like I'm borrowing it because I want to. You're not borrowing it, you're just getting it. You haven't given me any of it back even once. I'm doing my best to economize as much as I can, you know. But as I get older, if something happens, I need more money than before. I have to go to the doctors for regular checkups and treatment. And recently, the cost of living has gone up quite a lot, hasn't it? You always say that. If you know that you need to use more money for your checkups and the rest of it, why don't you try and work a little bit yourself for it? Oh, don't say that. I can't be working with my body in this state. You say that, but there's nothing wrong with you. You just feel tired and lethargic on some days. I get migraines too. So do I. In fact, my wife gets them as well. 
a lot of people get migraines, but they still go out and work. Oh, that may be true, but I'm old. It's not the same for you young folk. When I get a migraine, the pain is so bad that I can't get out of bed. I understand that, but even if you get a part-time job and work for just two days a week, that would help you a lot financially. How about it? If you tell them up front about your migraines, I'm sure you can find a job that will understand. And what happens if I get a migraine on the days I have a shift? That will make it impossible to work. I'm sure that any job will prefer to hire someone who can make it to all their shifts without an issue instead of someone like me. Then why not look for something that you can do from home? There are a lot of jobs that you can do on the computer these days. Hmm, I wonder about that. I don't think I could do any job like that. Remote work is for young people who are good with technology, not old people like me. Mom, I really didn't want to say this, but if you are really struggling as much as you say you are, then why not go on welfare? Welfare? Are you kidding me? I would never do that. It would be so embarrassing if people found out I was on welfare. There's nothing wrong with being on welfare. And if you can't work because of your health, then there's nothing else for you to do. But you do still have money from dad's inheritance and pension, so you might not qualify. You should ask somebody about it, and even if you don't qualify for it, they can help you find another way to improve your financial situation. I don't even want to go to any center for a discussion. What if people see me go inside? I don't think anyone will care about that at all. It has nothing to do with them. I'm married and have a kid, you know, and Lily will be going into elementary school soon, so I will have to start paying for that too. I can't always just be giving you money. I also have to think about saving for the future. Lily will go to college one day, and I need to be prepared in case of an emergency too. But you have a good job and salary. Why are you saying that you don't have enough money to help me? My job doesn't pay as well as you seem to think. I'm just an ordinary office worker. And if you keep asking me for money, it, it doesn't matter how much I try to save, it'll never be enough. Then why doesn't your wife get a job too? We talked about this last time. Sophie is pregnant right now. Pregnant women can still work. I always see people even in the later stages working. She could just get a part-time job with not that many hours. That would be something at least. She's still young after all. You say that you can't even do that because of your migraines. But you're going to be telling me that my pregnant wife should be working? That's because pregnancy isn't a sickness. That doesn't matter. Stop talking like this. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, but I really am in need of money. This can be the last time, but please help me out. How many times do you think I've heard that it'll be the last time? I can't help you any more than I have already. Please, Ben. I promise this time really will be the last time. If that's the case, I want you to think about what you're going to do so you don't need to borrow any more from me. If you find a way that you can bring in some money on your own, then I will think about lending you some more. You're still only in your 50s. If you want to work, it shouldn't be that hard to find something. Okay, I got it. I will find a part-time job then. Will you really? Yes, I promise. So this month, can you lend me about $500? You know that you are the only family left. I can't ask anybody else but you. Okay, fine. I'll transfer you the money. But I'm going to check back in a week to see if you found a job. We can talk about that then. Oh, thank you, Ben. That's fine. I'll decide what I'm going to do within the week. Mom, how is work going? Is everything okay? Well, it's not too bad, I guess. It's just data entry, so it shouldn't be too much of a strain. It's just pressing a bunch of keys all day. But even so, my eyes hurt from looking at a screen all day, and my shoulders get stiff so quickly. It's more of a strain than you might think. That would be the same for anyone, though. I'm sure you'll get used to it the more you do it. But if you can make about $500 working there on the side, you should be fine with all your expenses, right? Mm, I wonder if $500 will really be enough? I haven't made anything at all yet. I keep asking myself whether there's even a point in doing this job at all. 
Well, you've only just started. It's important to just keep going and things will get better. Hey, Ben. Would you be able to send me some money this month too? What? Why? You said that last time would be the actual last time. I know that, but I won't get paid for at least another month. What am I supposed to do about this month? You have a house, so you don't need to pay anything urgent like rent. Plus, if you still have money from the inheritance, the bigger problem is that you still can't get by somehow despite all of that. I've been telling you there are things I need that take a lot of money. Can't you just find some way to economize this month and make it through until you get paid? No, otherwise I wouldn't be asking you. Don't tell me that you've already spent all of Dad's inheritance. No, I haven't done that. But I'm thinking about my real old age and I don't want to use it. I understand that, but it's there to be used. Can I get you to send me $800 this month? No, I won't. I told you that already. I'm going to have a lot more expenses than I've had up until now very soon. Sophie and I need to start paying for Lily's school supplies and fees. And I have a second baby on the way. I can't just be handing out money to you. Oh, Ben, come on, help your mother out. No, not this time. I think I've spoiled you too much up until now. Things can't keep going on as they have been. This month, you have to try and figure things out on your own. Then how about I pay for Lily's school supplies and fees? What's the point in that? If you have money to buy those, then just use the money for yourself. Well, that's not quite what I mean. I mean that I will start to pay you back the money you've given me so far, so you can use that to pay for her. You're really going to do that? You haven't returned a single cent up until now. Of course I will. That's why I started working. Plus, I haven't even been able to do anything for Lily even though she's my granddaughter. I felt so bad about that the whole time. I see. But even so, I'll just accept the intention. I want you to take a look at your lifestyle and see what needs to be changed so that you can live by your own means. But Lily's school fees for her first year at school only come once, right? I would like to be the one to pay for that as her grandmother. Even if you say something like that, it's still a no. This time, I really can't give you anything. This has happened just too often. But I'm begging you, Ben. You know that you're the only family member who I can ask. I know that. You always say that. But I want you to try and see things from my point of view. If you plan on continuing to borrow money from me like this, I might need to reevaluate our relationship as mother and son. What do you mean by reevaluate? Do you mean you're going to sever ties with me? That's something that I have honestly thought about before. I just really want you to fix the way that you use money. You can't just always rely on me to bail you out. Oh, I understand. I'll stop asking. I'm sorry, Mom, but it's just been too much. Then at least let me pay for Lily's things for school. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But I want to give her something as her grandma. Let me do this at least. Even though you're here asking me for money? Oh, it will be fine. I'll get things ready, okay? Everything was good. The baby is healthy. That's good to hear. It's Lily's first day of school next month. Do you think you'll be able to attend the ceremony? I think I will. The baby is due next month, but it should be okay. I wanted to talk to you about the things Cindy sent us. Right. They arrived then? Sorry, I didn't mention anything, but Mom wanted to send some school supplies for Lily. Yeah, they arrived, but I took them to the police. What? Why the police? I think all the supplies that she sent us were stolen. Are you kidding me? Why do you think that? I just happened to hear a story about a girl who got her backpack stolen from a park with all of her things inside it. Okay, but why would that mean that things mom sent are stolen? Nothing was in its packaging and had all been wrapped up just in newspaper. It's not for certain, but it seems strange to send things like that if she had just bought them. Oh, seriously? 
I'm so sorry. So what did the police say? They said that they'll look into it, but that there's not really much they can do. I only just handed them in, so I guess they will contact me later. Ben, this time is really too much. I've tried to be really patient with Cindy up until now, but... I know. I'm really sorry about this. I know that it's not your fault. Don't think that I blame you for this. But I can't defend Cindy's actions at all. No, you're right. I should have been more strong with her before. I'm sorry that I had to come to this. Let me know as soon as the police contact you. Ben, did the school supplies arrive? Yeah, they did. I hope Lily likes them. I wonder. Oh, what do you mean? She didn't like them? What did she say? Mom, what did you have in mind when you sent that? What do you mean? I just wanted to do something for my granddaughter. But in the end, it all cost quite a lot. So, because of that, sorry, but could you send me a bit of money after all? I told you that I'm not sending you any more. Did you think that I would send you more money just because you sent Lily some supplies? No, of course not. Anyway, where are you right now? Oh, what do you mean? I'm at home, working on the computer. No, you're not. I'm there right now. Oh, really? Uh, well, actually, I'm out because I'm going to meet a friend. Then why did you lie to me? Oh, I just thought you would have something to say if I wasn't at home working. But I'm just out today to get coffee with a friend. That's also a lie, isn't it? You are going to see your favorite singer live, aren't you? Uh, what? Uh, what are you talking about? I asked the neighbors, and they said that you went upstate for a concert. Plus, you have a whole lot of merch here in your house. What is this? Have you been using all of the money I sent you for this? Well, none of that stuff is really that expensive. It's fine to blow off a little steam every now and then, surely. And the concert tickets, and the trip upstate, is that also not that expensive? And judging by all the ticket stubs here, you've been going to a concert at least once a month. I can't believe you've been messing around like this. Oh, this is my one and only hobby. Are you going to tell me that I can't even enjoy myself? If you have no money, then you should at least reel it in. And the stuff that you sent to Lily, that was all stolen, wasn't it? What? Of course not. There was a girl recently who got her backpack stolen with all of her school things inside it. Oh, so what? That doesn't mean that what I sent you was stolen. The bag you sent wasn't in a box or in any packaging, and it definitely had signs of use, too. You definitely did not buy these things new. The packaging was just getting in the way, so I threw it away before I sent it. You guys would have had to throw it away anyway. But you just sent it in a random cardboard box? Why does that matter? I had it lying around, so I sent the bag in that. The bag is perfectly fine. Maybe at first glance. The girl who used it before was only in her first years, so of course she hadn't used it that much yet, and it is still in fairly good condition. But her name is on it. What? Whose name? The girl from whom you stole the bag. You might not have noticed it because it was on the inside of the main pocket, and not on the outside of the bag. Uh, what? That must be some kind of mistake. I wish that it was a mistake, but it clearly isn't. But we took everything to the police, and they confirmed that the name matched the girl who had had her bag stolen recently. So, what are you going to do? Keep lying to me? Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. So you admit it, then? I just really wanted to give Lily a present before she started school. Even so, do you think any of us would be happy to get something that you stole from someone else? Thankfully, it wasn't a student at the school Lily is going to go to. But what if it was? Imagine what would have happened to Lily if that girl realized that Lily came to school with her bag that had been stolen before and started spreading rumors. Lily might have been bullied or viewed badly. And in the first place, stealing is bad, especially from a child. What were you thinking? I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything bad by it. How could that be? There's nothing good about what you have done. 
But it's better than stealing from a store, right? It doesn't matter where or who you stole it from. Stealing is stealing. How could you steal it from a little kid who had put it down to play in the park? What was going through your mind? Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. I'm really sorry. You should be apologizing to the girl who you stole it from, not me. You should just go and own up to what you did, and maybe things will end up as badly for you. What, I need to turn myself in? And what's going to happen to me? Will they arrest me? I doubt that they will arrest you, but they might make you pay a fine at least. Oh, what should I do? I wonder if the neighbors will find out about this. I don't want there to be rumors spread about me. I guess you really do only care about yourself. You're not thinking at all about how we or the girl whose bag it is feels. But the girl got all of her things back, didn't she? And it doesn't have that much of an effect on you and Sophie. That's it. I'm going to have nothing more to do with you. What? Why does that have to happen? If you cut ties with me now, I won't be able to survive on my own. If you stop wasting your money on your hobby, then you'll be fine. Stop acting so spoiled. Ben, I'm sorry. I promise I won't do anything like this again. It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. I don't want to hear your excuses. They're not going to satisfy me anyway. I won't ask you for any more money. Oh, please, just don't abandon me. In truth, I don't have any left of your father's inheritance either. I thought that might be the case, but it has nothing to do with me anymore. You brought this on yourself. I'm so sorry. I knew that you had no one else to rely on except for me, so I tried to be as patient as I could. But I can't do it anymore. You wasted all of the money from Dad, and even went so far as to commit a crime? I can't think of you as my mother anymore. But I have no one left except for you. Oh, don't leave me all alone like this. I'll change and I'll stop wasting my money, I promise. I wish you could have done that a little earlier. Just because we're related doesn't mean that I have to put up with just anything. I've done all I could to help you up until now, but I've had enough. We're not family anymore, so you need to figure out how to live by yourself without relying on anyone. After that, Mom went to the police and told them that she was the one who had stolen the bag from the girl. She met with the family and ended up resolving the situation. They felt bad for her because of her age and didn't try to press charges or anything like that, especially since the stolen things had been returned. Later, my mom had to move to a small apartment so that she would be able to pay the rent and had to stop indulging in her hobby so much. For a while, she continued to call me over and over again, hoping that I would pick up, but I never did. The last I heard about her was that she was continuing her data entry job at home and barely leaves the house because she feels so ashamed about what she did and doesn't want anyone she knows to see her. The girl who had had her bag stolen went to a school in the next district to where Lily was supposed to be going next year, but we changed the school to one a little further away just in case some rumors did start to spread. It would be horrible for Lily to go to a school where the other students were talking about how her grandmother had stolen a bag from another student. It isn't easy to abandon your own mother based on their actions, but there was nothing else I could have done. I put up with her and her actions for long enough, and in the end, this was the only way things could end. I feel bad in a way for how things ended up, but at the same time, she brought this all on herself and got what she deserved. From now on, I hope she can reflect on her behavior and change at least a little. Now that I don't have to constantly lend her money, my own family's daily life has improved significantly and we can live without worrying too much about expenses. I thoroughly apologized to my wife for letting things go on as long as they had, and thankfully she forgave me. From now on, as the foundation of the family, as a husband, and as a father, I will make sure to focus on those who are truly important to me and work to help them live their lives happily.